Yo, 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 what's good, what's good, my brothers? What's going what's on with what's you? Um, today we got a very special Breaking the Narrative podcast. This is um, BTN. Oh, yeah, we didn't celebrate our, our, our 50th podcast episode, so we also going to factor that into today. Yeah. Even though this is like 52. So, milestones, we hitting milestones. So, um, <clears throat> today we got a few guests here with us. First and foremost, we got the returning Ben. How you doing out there? Uh, GQ. We got Mark, the rebel. Oh, so real. Mark Anthony, my bad. There you go. Oh, so real. <laughs> What's happening, folks? And then we got my co-host, partner in crime. Yes. Tony, Tony Michaels. Yeah. Thank you. Great, greatly appreciate the, the shout out. And then we got the returning <laughs> Abe. Abe, you got to get like a... Uh, you gotta get like a little studio name, you know what I'm saying? A character name or something. <laughs> right, right. We can't just appreciate, appreciate. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But appreciate having me, man. Appreciate you having. Me. Uh, no problem, no problem. <clears throat> so today we're gonna be talking about giving thanks, what we thankful for. So, um, anybody want to go first? I can start it off with me. Be, I mean, but oh, you go ahead. Whichever, whichever one is best. I mean, go ahead. Oh, me personally, um, yeah. I'm thankful for. Life, I live. I, I, I woke up today. Mm-hmm. It's like, why wouldn't you be thankful for that? Because there's is a lot of people that didn't make it to this week Facts. or this day or this hour, this minute, this second. There's someone dying right now. Facts. So why not be thankful for just the life you are continue to live, even though some people say, oh, this shit is horrible. Life is the worst. Like, even if you do feel like that, you still woke up. So be happy with it. Just don't be ungrateful. Okay. So <coughs> that's one of the first things that I'm, I'm thankful for. Okay. Um, Mark. All right. Um, it's going to sound a little corny, but it's for real. <laughs> well, first and foremost, uh, I'm thankful for the knowledge I got because without it, you know, from the experiences, I wasn't able to put certain things into fruition. So... If it wasn't for the knowledge of certain things, man, I don't even think I'd be here today, to be honest with you. And uh, on top of that, I d- am thankful for y'all because y'all got me started back to being more healthier with myself. You know, I probably would have been in a very dark place, um, more well, to- the, more least, toxic than at ever. At least a bad dark place. We, you know, we, we're in a good dark place right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're in the good side. Yeah, yeah. yeah He's in a I happy medium, I guess. I would have been uh, a whole lot more toxic than ever. Probably would have been out here raging and vengeful which i'm not you know Mm -hmm. i'm fed i'm um i'm healthy and i'm standing still so you know i'm definitely thankful for that okay that's good ben i would say i'll piggyback off of what he was saying um pretty much thankful for the uh like life experience i went through to help me you know get the knowledge and experience and the chill temperament i have now because if i was the same if I didn't like learn from my lessons then and I was the same person I was then now, I probably wouldn't even be sitting right here. Okay. Uh, so I'm very uh, appreciative of like the heartbreaks and the betrayals because even at 28, it taught me a lot about life and how to go on forward. So that's what I'm thankful for. That's okay. respect. <coughs> Definitely respect. So I guess, I, you know, we're going to get into like some of the details of like what we're talking about. Um, first and foremost, you know, it's so hard to like just pick one thing to be thankful for. So, you know, first and foremost, I'm thankful for family. You know, they helped out with the upbringing, the life lessons, um, <clears throat> which also includes y'all. You know what I mean? Because growing up, how we grow up, even being an adult, how we're adults, like it's not easy being who we are. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And. We talk about it, me and Mike, we talk about this all the time, and we've experienced this because I've known you for, like, so many years. It's like, even though you're going through a bunch of rough or uneasy things, when you got, like, nice, stable friends or you got a stable support system, a stable structure, it makes it a little bit easier to go through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've been super blessed to always have that, like, structure in place as the way as though, yeah, you might go through some chaotic stages, but as long as you stay true to like that system and trust in yourself and the people around you, 
then everything will work out. So that's like in a nutshell what I'm most thankful for. But it's a million things. So um, a. Hey. Oh, All right, <laughs> let's get them started. Right. <laughs> okay, first thing I have to be thankful for is health. Just the fact that I'm able to even walk around is a blessing. Fact. Just because you, just being able to breathe on my own is really a blessing. Um, my second thing I would be most thankful for is the positivity I have in my life. A lot of people, it's a lot of negative when you go on your social medias, just when you just out in the world. There's so much negative. But for my life, I would say I have a lot of positivity. And that's just with friends, family, loved ones, everything. So, and to have good positive, like your positive friends, people that you could go to, that you could talk to, that you could. Even if you don't, even if you still upset, just the fact you can get it off of your mind is just good in life. So that's my main two things that I'm most thankful for is my health and the positivity I have in my life. All right, man. Let's yeah, let's go. <coughs> Drop the atom bomb with that one. <laughs> <laughs> some slight, some slight, <laughs> some slight, some slight. slight, <laughs> some slight. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna come back to that. The topic, but I did want to chime in on uh, the fiftieth. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think we're like two weeks off. I think we started the podcast like two weeks from now, last year. Probably like early December. I know it was like first week of December type blah. Yeah, because at one point, like I think we probably didn't drop like maybe two in a week because I think it was like one of the hot topic ones. When we doing the J Cole shit? No, I'm not. I'm not. Not not. I'm not. You know, emphasizing the number. I'm well, just I know like, you're not <clears throat> emphasizing the number. But yeah. It's just like so for y'all that you know don't know, we're coming up on our one year anniversary of doing this podcast, and you know we was going. Well, I guess technically we did end up having to get together. Maybe we talk about doing a party and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, technically it's kind of two, it, two it, birds and one stone. It counts. Yeah. So it worked out. Get a chance um, to have some friends over, just in, enjoy yeah. each other's company and shit. So I definitely wanted to thank y'all for uh, being a part of like everything that we do. You know, what made y'all start it? Like, give us a little history on how it started and everything. Oh, oh shit. Well, I can. He can. He can tell his side or my side. I was involved in other podcasts, <clears throat> and anybody that knows me knows that. I might be, like, goofy and, like, you know, funny and all that type of stuff. But anybody that knows me closely knows, like, I'm always business and structure first. And then you have fun. You know what I mean? So, doing the other podcast, it was, like, there was no, like, stability to it. And, you know, life is life is tough. So, things happen. You know, but at the end of the day... For something that I'm chasing and something that I want to do, I got to take matters into my own hands eventually. And so that was me coming to him since we were uh, a few months into, like, our, our skits and short films and things like that. And we see each other very frequently, and we have, like, this good rapport. Like, yo, we doing all this what do you think about doing this? You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then it's just like, I know at the end of the day, no matter what happens, I know that for the most part, I can trust him. You know what I'm saying? So that was, that's, to me, like I said, he could tell his side, that was my design factor in like doing this. What about you, sir? Well, my my side of the story is like, it's sort of similar, but most of it was, because remember when you decided to, you eventually started stopping by my house more frequently, and then we have like real long conversations. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, like you stopped showing up because I mean, like the whole pandemic thing started. Well, not it was actually before the pandemic, but the whole uh, yeah, like right before yeah, yeah, like right before the yeah. pandemic thing started. Like you ended up like we were on the phone like talking for like five six hours about a whole bunch of different shit, and then. Just came to the ideas like, well, we both 
came to the idea. It was like, man, this would be a great idea for like a podcast. And then actually, that's when we saw it. Like we stopped talking that long on the on the phone and shit like that. Mm-hmm. When and then we ended up just jumping into podcasts and putting all of that content together. Right. So it made it a lot easier for us to come up with content because all the time when we were having conversations, it was just like, hey, we got an idea here, got an idea there, and jumping back and forth between ideas, like, consistently. Right. So each idea that we came up with, we can turn into an hour, two-hour long conversation. And that's so much easier doing that on a podcast than it is just going over the phone because it's just like you're getting something, you're getting something recorded, and you can go back and listen to it and learn from it and all that other shit. There's so many different factors that go into that. Just documenting right. your life almost or your ideas and your thoughts. And I, it's been numerous times where you just go back and just listen to it and just say, hey, I could probably do this better. I could do that better, which made me, a, in general, made me a better speaker, which is I'm pretty sure it helped him as well, even though he has done a lot more uh, podcast work than I have. And I think it, it's, it's, somewhat, it's so much of a benefit to actually get a chance to, to speak your mind and yeah. On a more structured base because he was like more, like he had more of like a rockier relationship with the podcasting world because he didn't have too much consistency. And I was just jumping in. Yeah. So I think like towards, like towards like right now where we are, I think we're in a, a happy medium, but we can we still have room to grow. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, it's always like, I'm, I'm like, well, when I say me, I'm really saying us, but I just don't want to speak for him. You know what I'm saying? But you're never really satisfied at all. Like he said, it's always room to grow. It's always something that you could be doing that you're not doing. It's always somewhere that you want to be that you're not. You know what I'm saying? And until you reach those goals, and even then, by the time you get there, it's going to be more goals probably. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like it's always something to work towards. But with the three guests that we have, and Mark, Ben, and Abe, like all of y'all are – Starting podcast, you started yours already, right? Right, and you're going to be starting yours, and you're going to be starting yours. So, what's the what's the the backstories for y'all? Uh, for me, um, I have uh, severe social anxiety, which I found out about two and a half years ago. So, I just wanted to challenge myself um, as far as being social, talking, and um, I feel like my thoughts or the things that come across my mind or my perspective on things um, could potentially help someone else out that could be going through some something similar than some something similar to what I'm going through. Um, when I'm on Facebook and I make statuses that kind of touches on what I think or touches on uh, my perspectives, uh, I get a lot of good feedback or, you know, people tell me, hey, bro, like, I understand what you're saying, this, this, and that. So I figure uh, this is just another form of me uh, – becoming like an outreach mm-hmm. of, of sorts and stuff like that so that's mainly the reason why i did that um is to get my voice out there it's kind of to to uh, challenge myself more and um and yeah yeah that's dope definitely respect that Perks. um to kind of kick back off of what ben was saying mine's kind of happened the same way mm-hmm. um i always wanted to basically talk about what it was that my experiences were because to me um I end up always picking up this quote, which was basically leaving no stone unturned. And so basically um, the experiences that I had, there were some people who kind of judged me based off of what my experiences were, but didn't even really see see it from my side. They only saw one side. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I was like, oh, leave, um, basically you can't leave one stone unturned. Right. So I basically was like, well, I can't expect other people to tell my side of the story all the time or basically speak the whole truth. You know, some people say there's two stories but one truth. But I was like, all right, well, I'm going to start talking out more because I never did. I always bit my tongue about a lot of certain things. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, enough is enough. You know, certain things I kept bottled up and I wish I said more. So now I'm basically picking up the torch for that and saying what other people couldn't or – what other people are looking for somebody to say in order to relate. Because right. a lot of times the people just want to relate. They want to feel comfortable with what it is that they're dealing with, but they got to hear other people say it first. Right. So basically I'm just kind of breaking the barriers for them a little bit, say, hey, well, you know, people like us, we can do it too. But what was a confirmation for that was after 
a dark episode that I've had. I st- that's actually what brought me into, you know, chilling with Mike even more. Mm-hmm. Moms was like, you know, uh, Mike, want to hear from you, you know, reach out to him, talk to him. And then the first time I did it, he it was just like a different world. And we was just sitting there talking in the basement, but I couldn't even recognize my cousin. It right. just seemed like a totally different man I was talking to. And I got like, it almost felt like an addiction. I was infatuated with how the aura felt. Mm-hmm. And so we start communicating more. Then he was just like, yeah, man, you have a knack for this, man. You don't see it now, but you got it. And he was like, you know what, man? You got to start doing a podcast. So he put it in my ear. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got the name because he's like literally, man, he was like, look, you got a voice for it. You got to look for it. We're going to do it. Kicking and screaming. And that's where my title came from. Right. Fire. Yeah, so, you know, that's that's basically where it is I'm taking my stepping stones off of now. Mm-hmm. So what? So... <clears throat> He got his start. Ben got his started already. So what's the timetable on like? To be honest with you, I'm not sure. Um, it should be happening soon though, because I'm literally getting everything together. Top of the year, <sighs> new year, top of the new year. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be in the new year for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I'm definitely I, getting that ball rolling. I, I, at first, know, I just want to get a theatrics for it, you know. But I was like, fuck it, we just we just going to get started. Yeah, I know you've been a guest over here so many times, so like. Oh yeah. You're definitely, like, yeah, uh, definitely gonna be in there. Sure. I'm just sure. I'm just yeah, sure. Yeah, y'all, sure. y'all was gonna be the first people I was gonna call. Like, yeah, man, you know, I don't know how what your time frames looking like, man, but I'm throwing these days and these times out here. Like, y'all pick one and we're oh, gonna yeah. do it. All right, just making sure. <laughs> yeah, Ben. Hey, same thing, Ben. You ever need like, you know, guest co-host, part time co-host? You know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> part time co-host. Yeah, I probably know twice a month or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Unfortunately, mine's don't really got that type of story. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just like sports betting. <laughs> hey, I feel as though I give out good information. Mm-hmm. If you talk to me about a game, I could tell you how to look at it to a good point of view. Um, a lot of my friends, they talk to me about games, and we we do well. So mm-hmm. I just said, why well, talk to just friends when I could talk to the world? So, started it. Um, I did. I ain't gonna lie. I did maybe one, two videos. Just that was it. Now mm-hmm. my first video did good. Mm-hmm. Now, my first video, like everything I put out on that video, went through as far as a good sports bet. Okay. The second one, it ain't really go like that. All right. <laughs> so, but that's the thing, just about sports betting. Like, and any hecklers. Uh, of course, of course. Yeah, you I, lost lost. Hey, oh, I, lost, hey, I lost my car because of you, nigga. Exactly. <laughs> I lost yeah, my, my car. <laughs> ain't nobody like that yet. Yeah. People go, you know, people, yeah. <laughs> of course they going to, when you lose, the world going to let you know when you lose. Hey, uh, uh, that's facts. Maybe two people will let you know when you win. Yeah. But the world will let you know when you lose. So, I mean, it happens, though. So, I mean, that's. You like it, though. Yeah, I can tell like, you like it. I yeah, can tell it's, you, hey, it's I fun. Th- like I it's really you. fun. Like yeah. it's real. Like to me, like looking at a game and thinking who gonna win the game beforehand, how many points would they win by? Like I, we do this all the time. Like we already know how how much your f- TV is probably on ESPN. Right. So if you watch it all the time, you might as well try to. You see what I'm saying? So I just like doing it. It's just it's a passion for me. It's more like a passion, but try to turn it into something. So. That's, that's dope. That's yeah, a good story. I don't know what the hell you was talking about. Yeah, nah, it's just I ain't got you know. now, 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 how you said, how Mark, how you said earlier about how I was modest, that's modesty right there. Like, <laughs> that right there, that's what modesty is. Like, yeah, just so we can clarify. Yeah, that, that, that was a good story. I mean, yeah. it, it didn't have, like, the, the serious, deep meaning like Mark said. Or anything like ours, but it's just like yours still has meaning to it. It's still, it, it's still a great here's a, story. His a serious at face value though. Like he's out here yeah. sports batting. Yeah. Like his a serious like through and through. It's like I, our backstory is serious, but once you get to like what we doing, we just having fun. Yeah. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is like it, it really is fun though. Like like you said, like I look at it, it is like a passion. Like, yeah. Looking like I, when you watch ESPN twenty four seven, you might as well try to. Yeah. Do what you could do with it, so yeah. and that's probably why I should, it'll do something because it's a passion for me. Like, yeah, I do it even if I'm not on a podcast, I'm gonna still be sports betting. Yeah, like, that's, that's even, respect. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Like, so when we when we looking at for you when we what kind of timetable we looking at top of the year? You know, I'm nuts. I'm pushing everybody to start the top of the year. <laughs> yeah, but you know why it's tough with um with sports betting is because like once football ends, basketball happens twenty four seven. 
like every day basketball happens. So yeah. it's like it'll be hard for you to find a timetable when to be putting shows out because a game is happening every day. I mean I I you know, not to not to try to make you work like a slave or something, but you will have to do one every day, you know, yeah, like technically. Yeah, right, right. Could make right. a little quick five minute snippet or something like that. That's what I yeah. On YouTube, yeah. I got a couple of, oh no, on YouTube like that. No, nah, he's saying he's saying every day. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's going to be. I mean, like, you I can always do five day. minutes yeah. every day. You can do five yeah. minutes yeah. every day. I don't look at, Wake I look up in the morning. I don't look at it every day like, okay, like the Charlotte Hornets play Tuesday. I ain't going to look at them Wednesday. Cause they, you see what I'm saying? So it's like, it's just high. But I could get something going on for at least. All right, what about, what about like just every other, like every other marquee matchups or something? I was thinking about doing something like that or just saying like a week of just doing what's been hot that lately like okay. okay all right like uh the charlotte hornets been covering the spread three times in a row they're going up against this team just keep me out i don't want it. little stuff like that oh, like, yeah. okay, right. okay. Right. okay so you're yeah. technically gonna be like somewhat of a <coughs> highlight real ass type of guy could should be should be and then you know how I many stuff you can go with that you could oh my goodness yeah, yeah that should be something i should look into yeah, yeah. i'd recommend it all right so so Appreciate you. So, Appreciate so, you. so so top of the year right Top of the year. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, there we go. There we go. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna put pressure on y'all to do it, man. <laughs> man nigga, nigga, nigga hey. laughing and joking now, but wait till like he ain't gonna be the only one over here kicking and screaming, my nigga. Hey. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, till, wait till like wait till they get around like a week before like Christmas. I'm gonna start pressing niggas, man. <laughs> you start yet? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, like yeah. every 20 minutes, or so you get a text message. You start yet? Hey, you start hey. yet? What, what day you free, man? I'm gonna come over there help you set up. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, get it going. Yeah. But um, that nigga lucky. I don't have access to his house. This nice. nigga Mark, real lucky, not bro. Not yet, not yet. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Walking he, down the street, tapping his watch and shit. Yeah, no bull. <laughs> like right, right outside of the little zone. I ain't even got a watch on. Just tapping my wrist and shit. But you already got the, you already got the, you know, the fancy microphone yeah. and all that. Yeah, you know, I'm, little I'm, gold like microphone. Yeah, I'm shit. surprised you. I'm surprised you comfortable using these. Uh, got to lower yourself to use these. Don't <laughs> this is a no bull. Same thing, <laughs> got the soundboard and everything. Got it all for free too. Besides the the little new microphone, little gold you know? Yeah, ex girlfriend, right? That's yeah. all right, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, said it. Yeah, said it. <laughs> just throwing my shit all the way the fuck out there. Hey, it was definitely a gift. She was just like, you know what, man, I support it, bro. Yeah, that's all right, it. man. So I was like, it's a little man. bit of envy in his voice, bro. You can hear it. It's a little right, envy. Right, man. It's like, man, I wish I had somebody to do that for me. Yeah, my ex was having my shit on fire. Shit, man. <laughs> that's all right, right there, man. Hey, man. I lost a few things too, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, if somebody was like, yeah, you gonna lose this, but I'm gonna give you all this. Yeah. Who's how many gold mics you got? Nah, just that one. I had that I just recently bought. Yeah, just that one. But you also got like uh, like four other Definitely mics. Not so. You said what? Yeah, well, you got like four other mics. Nah, just two. Nah, two you had like four. <laughs> you had like a case, you had like a little suitcase. I remember that. Came yeah, that yeah. look like a drug it deal. Came, it came with two in it. Yeah, all right. You trying to be fake humble and shit. <laughs> all right, so let me ask this: How how did y'all come up with the name of y'all podcast? Well, that was more so. That was more so Mike than me. It was a collective effort, but that, it was more so like because we wasn't going to talk about the same old what's going on, like pop culture, celebrities and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that was pretty much his idea, the whole we breaking the narrative of what a lot of people normally do with their podcast. So, yeah. Which so, I think we definitely need more of, though, for yeah. everybody to just be like, Going against the grain of everything. Yeah. So that's, that's like 75% Mike right there. But I ain't gonna lie. You even put that little picture together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that, um, that BTN <laughs> little podcast, like that, that logo, I made that. And I ain't gonna lie, that's one of the best things I've ever made so far. Yeah. Like, I'm really proud of myself with that logo. Yeah. And shout out because I think, I think Mark, you think, think you took the picture, right? Yeah. Mark, yeah, the yeah, one that yeah, took yeah. the picture. Shout out to Mark for the, uh, we need to up, I tell you, we need to upgrade it, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mark, Mark been on too many of these jumps not to be, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, and eventually, bro. Like, I had to take like a pit, like a full picture and I had to edit it. Nice. Right. Because I, I can't, <laughs> I don't feel like having to 
like just take his care like take his picture out and add it into that one. It's like it wouldn't even look right. It just looked really, really weird. So it just had to be a full picture. Got yeah, it looked mad three dimensional. All right, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna change the subject again because you know we only got 15 minutes of band. Oh, pause. Oh, I don't bro, pause. Definitely, yeah. bro. Oh. <laughs> it's such a shame you got did around these. All right. Anyways, though, you the one that started it. Well, technically, you started it, but all right. All right, blame me. <laughs> so, I noticed earlier you said you had like the social anxiety. Have you been like working on not having it? Do you like not want to work on it? Are you okay with having it? Because cause the older I get, I feel like having something like that is also it's not that bad no more. You know, I really feel like you know if I could just disappear from the public side, I would without having anxiety. You know what I'm saying? So how you how you feeling? Um. Well, first, uh, I was naive in the whole spiritual uh herbs, oil, teas, nature route. So mm-hmm. I would take the medications that the pharmacy prescribed and it just made me feel a little bit more moody. So okay. I just stopped in general and I just went with things that um, I learned through experience that helped me out. So for example, um, I used to go into Walmart um, and feel a need to pass out or get lightheaded because like, I'm thinking about everybody around me and stuff like that. So now I just go in there and I listen to music or I just completely like disassociate uh, myself from everything. I pretend that I'm somewhere mentally like a, a sunflower garden or out of space somewhere just mm-hmm. to kind of distract myself from the people around and then um, I come back. And I do it so much now it's like I do it naturally like like when I'm like right now uh, <coughs> although I'm not like super like anxious it's like I still in a way kind of like got to remind myself to like stay uh, Calm like pay level. attention Like yeah. don't lose your head Don't like try to waver off Because you know You don't get lost in the sauce So um, I do wish that It was like a more natural way So I don't have to keep like um, Disassociating myself mentally mm-hmm. But um, That's just the way I just told myself uh, Just to Go somewhere mentally Come back when You know you're good So that way You know you don't Seem weird or uh, Have those effects so like how did how did like how did it start? Do you remember that? Was um, it something from as a kid or it started well I went to a uh psych ward when I was in two thousand seventeen. Mm-hmm. Um and uh we went through a, uh, a lot of tests and one of the one of the things due to one of the things that they tested for was that uh anxiety depression, all of that stuff. So mm-hmm. um, when I went through a, uh, several tests, that's when I found out it was severe social anxiety. Okay. And also uh, therapists recommended that and uh, just uh, counselors and things like that, people I talked to while I was there, uh, they all just said that. So um, I just took it and ran with it. And now I feel like I'm at a point where, uh, like for I, I, t- I did a fashion show about three weeks ago. Somebody invited me to do a like, walk in front of people with – no shirt on and so hold on. So this G- whole GQ bit? this whole time he was listening to us uh badge and marker by Marlon and, and it's you this whole time and it's you this whole time. <laughs> nah, but, <laughs> nah, I'm doing random. it with his shirt on. Right, right, right. Nah, it was just right. random. But I feel like that was just the universe testing me um in that area. So Okay. I could have said no, but I said, No, nah, fuck it. I'm a you know, I, I like this challenge, I wanna get better, so I did it and I feel like I that was like me getting over a hump because now I'm not afraid to like stand in front of people and talk or, you know, stuff like that. I used to be afraid of. That's dope. All right, next step, Chip- Chippendales and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next step, next big about, step. We can't even say he gonna be in GQ. They don't allow that, do they? <laughs> Top, <laughs> topless and all that. Uh, I told you, bro. Yeah, Abercrombie I mean, uh, and Fitch. They they allow it. You gotta be in Playgirl. <laughs> Yo, chill. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, whatever you gotta do to conquer Ew. those type of things. That's. That's what's up, yo. Uh, that's big discipline, big strength. That's super, like, that's dope right there. So for, any, for anybody that's out there, like, dealing with it, what would you recommend, like, not, not like, necessarily uh, all the steps, but, like, at least, like, some beginning steps, what would you recommend them do? Um, get a journal. Um, even if you aren't a writer, uh, write down your thoughts. Write down what you feel when you – 
envision yourself in those spaces so that when you do get in those spaces, it's not as hard or challenging to, you know, operate. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about it more. Um, some people, the meds might work, but I don't recommend it because I feel like it just leads to a, a further attachment. And then when you stop, it gets way worse than it was when you originally started. Okay. And mm-hmm. then you got to keep taking it and keep taking it and keep taking it to maintain when you can just um, just try to just to keep living and try to find ways naturally to do it. You know, you know yourself, you know how your mind works. So um, just just go with what feels natural to you and put your put your all into it and, and manifest, you know, some of the things that you want. Like for me, I have my morning mantras. I say, uh, I don't have this anymore. I'm not afraid to talk. I am this, I am that, you know, just to try to prep talk my way into, you know, these things. Okay. Okay. Early morning affirmation is important. I definitely want to add a little bit of something onto that, too. Okay. uh, (coughs) Me and him actually went through, and we still, because you still deal with it just a little bit, right? Yeah. So, like, I deal with the same shit. That's why, like, most of the times you hear me see me pulling out my AirPods, because I always got to have my headphones. And that's why, like, some people, like, when I go places, especially far places, because I'll walk for days. I'm a straight nomad. Mm -hmm. But... Some people say, well, Mark, you walk fast. The reason is because I'm totally losing myself mentally. I know where I'm at. Right. I'm very aware, you know, the ins and outs of every crack and crevice that I'm going to. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I know how to maneuver because me technically is, like, I stay on the move because I'm on a mission mentally. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm in my own plane. I'm in my own place. And the music is just it's my adrenaline at this point. Because okay. I like to totally shut out. Every place that I'm at, especially like places like Walmart or whatever, like there, I can go to a warehouse, or well, not a warehouse, but a wholesale place, and I can feel the energies of other people. You know, the backside of being an empath, like I can just feel the energies. I can hear somebody complain, do this or that, or I notice too much. If it's quiet, my eyes and my focus will be idle, and it'll drift to all different types of places, mm-hmm. and I'll pay attention <coughs> to other things that I really wish I didn't. And so it'll bother me. So now I have to basically focus on that one particular thing. And I can't ignore something that's already in my ear. So that's why I put my headphones on. So just to add on to how to combat that, of course, yes, take a journal. Because what people with anxiety, the thing is we go through it so much, we'll tend to forget the good things that we do. We're constantly always going to be worried about the bad things. That's why the anxiety is there. Right. But when we write down stuff. And we rip it out of the journal, put it on a wall, whatever. It's constantly reminding us, oh, yeah, you know what? I conquered that last week. I forgot all about that. Right. But if you constantly see it, it's just like, okay, um, now I'm knocking down the walls or the chances of the what if. Because the what if is also something that's really going to trigger it. That starts at the bottom. Right. What if? What if? What if? So it's just like, well, I don't know what's going to happen on this end. But now, it's like, you know what? I already did this last week. Um, it probably didn't go exactly how I wanted it to, but mm-hmm. I already did it. Mm-hmm. So now you are, are basically taking down the probabilities of what could possibly happen to you that could be negative. And now you can think of all the things that are positive because it's like, well, you know what? This happened. That happened. I can't think of anything else that's bad is going to happen. So now it's time, time to think about the good stuff. So definitely uh, go with that. Um, I'm not really big on the pharmaceuticals myself. I've been in psych wards. I've had uh, medications that were forced upon me. Some people, uh, I had uh, psychiatrists where they literally was just like, well, yeah, this will help you sleep, but not telling me that this was another antidepressant. Mm -hmm. I had an um, experience where I actually had a chemical imbalance where I got mad aggressive, didn't even know why, to the point where I was calling the cops on myself and telling them where I was going and what I was going to do. So... After finally going to the psych ward again for the last time, I had a therapist who actually took the time to break it down. She was like, you were not supposed to take none of these combinations. First of all, I was taking black box label medications that literally would give mood swings to people to up to the age of 25. I was taking it at 16. So there was that. Then another one was added on top of it because I had trouble sleeping. That was supposed to help me go to sleep, but it was another antidepressant, which was also another black box label. I had an arrogant psychiatrist, which literally was like, well, I'm going to add this into there. This should help you, but I'm not going to take this away. I'm just going to lower the dose, not knowing the combination period was just bad. Right. So after that, I literally started to experiment on myself a little bit where there were the two weeks that I would take this and then I'll stop. Mm-hmm. And like also I had a parent that was like, Leah, did you take your medicine? You know, did you do this? Did you do that? Literally to a point where there was times cops even had to show up to my house and watch me take it. And so 
Now I just stopped taking it and the mood got better. And the one who, the parent who was always forcing me to take that medication was like, yeah, you're doing great. Your medication's doing well and all that. Not knowing that I stopped taking it a long time ago. So I was like, obviously I don't need it. I even had a cop that told me I didn't need it. Right. So it's just like, now I'm going to break down the barrier. Really, the medication is what you do with yourself. If you want to finally get back into, well, the world is going to do what it want to do. But what's going to happen in my life, I have more control over that. <clears throat> what you going to do about it? What you going to do to make what you want happen? Right. Because you can't rely on nobody else. Sorry. Humans are unreliable. Only you as a human being are the most reliable thing you got in your life. So once you be able to take control of that and figure out how you're going to make it happen, the anxiety diminishes. That's that's dope. And it's also it's also good that, you know, we can have these kind of conversations nowadays and people are more so open about it you know what i mean um all right so i know it's almost 4 15 so before you leave man i just want to say that uh you know i appreciate you for dropping through you know you've been since i've known you you've been super insightful real dope brother you know what i'm saying not scared to fight against the grain and uh i'm just just wanted to say i'm thankful for you bro i appreciate it likewise man yeah Yeah, first one bro yeah (laughs) Respect, respect. Yeah, definitely learned a lot from you. I could honestly say that I definitely learned a lot from you. And that's just knowing you all for just two times. Like, yeah, yeah, I definitely <coughs> learned a lot for you. And appreciate you for telling your story. Yeah. yeah that takes, definitely, that definitely takes courage. So, I appreciate you. And you also got four people right here whenever you need anything. Yeah, and, we, and we definitely going to be looking to work, yeah. collab way more in the new yeah. year going forward. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he's about to get up out of here. You know, we only can afford him for a half hour. <laughs> yeah, 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 thirty minutes. He's he quite pricey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's definitely good to see him. Yeah, it's trash. It's, it's always good to have man Ben stop by, man. Yes, sir. Hey, always right. a really good, Thank insightful you, brother. brother. All right, champ. Appreciate you, bro. Like, have a good holidays, man. Just ah, oh, man. We love you, bro. Yeah, definitely love you, brother. But, uh, man. <laughs> man, he finally got a headset to himself. Yeah, he can fully take over. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. doing the the alternating and shit. Oh, yeah. This, he, he really got comfortable. He, <laughs> he put the headphones <laughs> underneath the hat. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's a movement. Yeah, I'm keeping my movement. head cold or well, real warm. I think it's fucking the bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I guess we could uh we can we can go back to like I got some more things that we what we thankful for. You know, we just jump off topic and then we just kind of Oh damn. Yeah, you know how we, you know how man, we I had a story, man. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, man, yeah plenty of time, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. Yeah. All right, uh, speaking on the whole anxiety shit. Um I actually had the exact same thing happen. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it on this podcast before, but I know uh, A probably well, Black Game never got a, a chance to hear it. Okay. So the situation I had to go through was more memory based. So my my triggers like were all memory. Like if I remember something, I immediately start like hyperventilating and all that shit. And even there's sm- like certain scents would like throw me off and at some point i'm just i'm hyperventilating i'm I'm literally tearing up almost crying and shit in the middle of it didn't matter what the fuck i was doing it would just happen and regardless of how much i tried to get it get away from it it would not go away until it ran its course so in order for me to get past that i had to figure out where it was coming from which is, I think, where a lot of people go wrong is where they don't want to ever go back there. And it's a it's a hard pill to swallow when you have to deal with, like, your past traumas. Mm-hmm. But in order for you to heal, you have to go back there and come back. I feel as though, like, I, I go by this consistently. The growth is when you can go back to where you were and remember everything and come back unscathed so all of your memories that hurt you no longer hurt you now because you can still see them and feel 
nothing towards them. They don't control you anymore. Once I got past that, it took me a long time. But once you get past that, it's an immediate transformation. Like, you see who I am now, and you would not have known who the fuck this guy is had you seen me five years ago. Like, when Mark was saying, like, the shit that he would go through, like, him being really, really aggressive, that was me. I had a real serious, like, imbalance when it came to my testosterone. I would just randomly just be aggressive for no reason. Even when it was uncalled for, like, I would just randomly be aggressive. Because growing up, I was, like, low-key emasculated. That was, like, my biggest gripe. Like, I, I was always talked down to, and I hated it. So my situation that I had to go through, like, it caused me as an adult to sort of, like, like lose it. Because I'm trying to find out where the testosterone is coming from, but this is all natural. I'm supposed to have it. But I didn't know what to do with it because I was never able to, like, introduce it to the world. So in order for me to get past it, like I, like I said, I had to go back to where I was, like, nurture the child that was there, nurture it, and then get back to where I was. And get back to what I needed to do. That's when I started writing more and all that shit like that. Like, I, my writing has grown ex- exponentially because of the fact that I went back to where I was. And now I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to the child that technically I should have been bringing with me instead of tossing aside. So, like Ben was talking about, you got you to gotta write some shit down. Like, I, my ability to write. It's just me conveying my messages to people so that they don't have to go through the same shit and letting them know, hey, there's an other side to this. It's not always the dark path. It's not always the light path. It, you can move in between with no problem. Like You can harbor both. Like At the same time with you being dark, you can also be light, and it's not a problem with having that darkness available because – at the end of the day, it's a part of you. And I, that's something I had to learn. I, I was fighting against darkness my entire life. It's just that it was starting to consume everything. And darkness was it. It was the only thing it, that I had left because the light it was just like it's just there. I, I didn't have I didn't have a problem with anything light wise. But the darkness was just consuming everything. I had nothing else to live for besides the dark, the dark side and shit. And when I would walk around people will see how angry I was like I literally had a face to where you wouldn't want to talk to me ever like people will look at me and be like you know what I don't want to be around you because you feel you look as though you look like you're gonna kill somebody and that was my mindset at some at one point like that was my mindset like in my in my mind I felt as though if someone was to try me I would be in jail because I would probably go there for murder because I was that frustrated. I didn't have any way of releasing any of my testosterone, so I'm going to release it all at once. So even as a kid, I was growing up, when I when I got really, really angry, I got really, really strong for some reason because my testosterone was so incredibly high, even for a child. Like, I was really, really strong and tough. Like, I would literally hurt myself trying to hurt someone else. Didn't matter. Like, as long as they were down, I had no problem with it. Even when I, I, I remember I was at a barbecue and then it was a kid that kept messing with me. I swung him so badly to the point where I threw him at a tree. Literally, I threw this kid at a tree. Like, we're the same age, same size, and I threw him at a tree. Like, swung him by his arms and threw him at a tree. And that's just the testosterone was, it was breaking out like in, in combination with the adrenaline. I had no other I had no other outlets. And that's where it went. But I had to realize like once I got to an adult, it took me it took me 29 years to get to this. I'm 31 now. I've only been this guy for 2 years. It takes a lot to get past it. But once you do, it's it's amazing. It's well worth the wait. Even though it does seem dark. And trust me, it will get there. But two years of solace is worth all of the pain and turmoil that I went through. 
because I know I'm never going to, even when I have kids, I'm not going to pass it on because I already know what's wrong with me. And if they go through the same thing, I know how to fix it. Like, I wrote a book about depression this year. I wrote a book, How to Fix Your Depression. I wrote a book about it. Like, this is, it's, just, it's called The Cleanse. Like, and I'm pretty sure you probably said I sit on my page and shit. I would advertise yeah, I that seen, shit for like yeah, a week yeah. and shit. So I wrote that specifically to help people. And I released this shit for free because I wanted people to be able to get past it and let them know that there's always an alternative. And I dedicated so much of my time to it. Like, talking, even talking Big Abe and shit, like, like the whole process, he he heard about the entire process. I probably annoyed the hell out of him because of all the shit that I would tell him about this shit. But he really got a chance to, like, really listen to me while I was writing this shit. And every single portion of it, like, I poured myself into it. I let them know this is how you do it. And even if it doesn't work for you, it's always a process. Like you can, you can come back to this in 20 years if you want to, and maybe it'll help you then. Because there's no telling as to when exactly your time is going to come for you to fix yourself. Like, because a lot of people think that shit. As soon as this shit is over, like as soon as they get to the point where, like, darkness is the consuming portion of themselves like it's consuming them they feel as though there's nothing left but once they go to something like that and it's somewhat is it's like an outlet to them and it's not it's not coddling them and like the because the book is it's not coddling them it's, it's letting them know hey you can try this you can try this you can try this i'm not gonna babysit you i'm going to let you know if you take it you take it if you don't you can always come back to it Every portion is every. It's like a whole bunch of different uh, sections. Every section is different. It goes through many different uh, forms of depression. Like it goes through like sexual traumas. It goes through like uh, serious depression, suicidal thoughts, and all all that type of shit. And all the different outlets you can <coughs> you can utilize in order for you to get past it naturally. Not necessarily like going to a a psychiatrist and all that other shit. I'm talking about naturally. You your body can produce majority of the shit you need to be happy. So why not? allow yourself to get that the same thing with ben and mark was saying like utilize the natural high I the same thing with uh the dopamine releases in the body you get the same feeling when you you get high for the first time that that's the reason why people get hooked on crack because they they trying to chase that first high and they have no idea how to get it back and then they're going to continuously try and do it just trying to chase the first high you can get that first high by yourself. Like you don't need a drug. You just need you. You need yourself. You need that third eye. You need your inner you. A, a lot of people don't know how strong they are, like internally. So they seek outside sources in order for them to get to better themselves when they have all of the, the, the necessary resources already available. So. That's technically what I wanted to say. I mean, it's, it was rather lengthy, but I mean, it was somewhat uh, insightful. No, nah, that's all good. <coughs> Pause <laughs> on the lengthy part. Let's take a while. All right, now we can switch it over. We can switch it over. Now nah, you know I ain't got a story. Oh I man, if you got a story, you got a story, man. Yeah. Nah, I ain't got one. Oh, oh, so you never, you never really dealt with anxieties. He does, but yeah, it's just like yeah. he, he, yeah, he just wants to be that. Eve, like right now. Yeah. Oh, it's not, it's not, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Same with me. I ain't really got like a whole anxiety story, but um, I mean, yeah, my story ain't really anxiety. My thing is really just keeping everything bottled in. Well, because okay. yeah, like I was talking. Remember we were talking about that yesterday, like right. I, like. My problem is I just keep everything just bottled in. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I was, I, get, I don't want to say just how I was brought up, but I never seen a man express themselves. Yeah. Let me say that. Right. Because that's what we're taught. Yeah, like, I never seen a man sit here and tell that. ESPN plug. 
<laughs> damn. Yeah, <laughs> Both of y'all. I was about to say, not say it to him. <laughs> I, thought, I, I would try to talk over it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we want to see what's going on in the NFL. Nah. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, like I was just saying, my main thing is I just keep everything bottled in because I've never seen a man express himself. Like, my main, everything I didn't seen is just. You all right, little nigga, get over it. Facts. Yep. Like, you'll be all right. So, but the thing is, though, it starts affecting me as an adult in ways you ain't even know. Like, me yeah, and my girl. Double yeah. trauma and mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, just me and my girl, me and my friends, like, me and just whatever. Like, shit. Even when you at work and you feel like you're being in the street, like, it just, everything goes into that, like, bruh. You'll be all right. Get over it. Such and such, such and such. Because yeah. the fucked up part is when you don't talk about it, there, some of the things you can just, you you actually forget. But right. your body don't. Right. Like, like like you think everything is just all a remainder for your brain, but even your heart even remembers shit. Mm-hmm. So when you just be like, all right, cool. Well, oh, man, I forgot all about that shit. You know, you just get so used to burying shit so much where it's just like it's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. But, yeah, it's still within you because it's just like, a trigger is a trigger. It don't always come up from up top. Right. It's literally like, well, I felt this way about this, but why the fuck do I feel this way? Yeah. And know. I was just going to get to that. Yeah, yeah. That feeling, that feeling that you just talked about, that never goes away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like as much as you, you may forget about just how you may forget about what happened, but the feeling that that whatever made you feel, you'll never forget that. So when it comes, when it comes once, it's like, okay, I remember the feeling. When it comes twice, it goes back to that first feeling. It comes the third time, it goes back to that first feeling. Now, that first feeling is like this. This is just a, hu- it's a humongous feeling that you had now. But because you done went through it another three to four times. So it kind of, like, I never, and I know you asked me how, how am I working on it. And it's hard to even work on it. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard because. Once it's in there, it's in there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, so yeah, it's just, for those who listening, bro, don't let people gaslight you, bro, because that's what people do. They'll gaslight it. It's mm-hmm. like they don't understand the situation, and or they don't know what to do about it. So they're just like, "Well, fuck it. I can't tell you never. So you should just get over it." Because that's their own understanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For me, for me, it was more so like because when he's telling me one thing, and I know, even though we've been close a bunch of years, that's like not one of my traits. So it's like I kind of just wanted to, to, to go into it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, yeah, and just yeah, to see, yeah. like, you know, I well, you was raised like this, and I wasn't. So obviously it's it's extremely difficult, like you said, to work mm-hmm. on. But at mm-hmm. the same time, it's like you, if you kind of just – you got to just at least try. You know what I'm saying? not saying, you know, not you, yeah, yeah, but, but people in general. general. Yeah, in people general. in general. Like, just you got to at least, general. like – Try and chip away at it, like like Mike said about how about his book. Like you might got to come back twenty years from now. You might got to come back ten years. You know what I'm saying? Like it's different levels for different people. Like how you said you was depressed. Like it might it might have took somebody else ten years to get over depression. Yeah. But if they was fighting, then it just is what it is. Because regardless, if you blessed to stay alive that long, ten years gonna go past regardless. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, so you might as well. Fight. Right, right, yeah. right. So that's that's yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's big actually. With you, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, so yeah, if you yeah. if you blessed to, to still be alive, you might as well just try. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cause my thing is, it's it's to the point like even communicating is wrong. Like somebody ever asks you what's wrong and you ain't even know what to say? Yeah, because you're not used to feeling mm-hmm. at all. Or like, it drains the fuck well, out of you trying to talk. Yeah. Or even you don't even know how to communicate it. Yeah. Like, just like, I got 27 feelings in my mind right now, bro. I don't even know which one to tell you to even start letting them flow out. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how it starts. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Because as men, in general, like we're, it's an ingrained nature for us to just accept all forms of pain as a shrug. Eh, just what dust I, it off the shoulder. Am I what I told you yesterday? Yeah. Like niggas expect you to be like super like robotic. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. if it's anything dealing with like negativity, like a, a male, especially nowadays, like a male, his sole definition is to be like a protector and a provider. Mm-hmm. Anything else, you're wrong. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need to get over. Yeah. You need to get over. Like, like yeah. As long as you're doing those two, we get over. Yeah. We don't care about that heartbreak, boy. We don't care about that heartbreak. We don't care about what you just went through with your peoples. We don't care about what just happened in your job. We don't care. We don't care the fact that they just made you work sixteen hours. Okay, now come home, be super daddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like <clears throat> forgetting yeah. that they cut your vitality in half, though. Yeah, yeah. It's like the biggest thing that we have to deal with, because as, as kids, it's just how many times have we actually been asked, "How are you? Are you?" Is, is there something wrong? Do you need help with something? How many times have we actually been well, asked well, that and then they meant it? For, yeah, yeah, I was just about to get to that. Because for me, it was like a lot of people can ask you that, but a lot of people use that as like a, like a mechanism to basically swing things around to them. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Some of them, yeah, they want to talk about themselves. Right. Be nosy yeah. And that's how like, they break the eye. Oh, yeah, Mike, mm-hmm. how you been? And you be like, man, you know, I've been going through this and that. And, oh, that's crazy. But look, listen to this. You know yeah, what I'm right, saying? Right, oh, yeah. bro. I was just going to yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> so, now we having a battle. Who got the most problems? Like, bro, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. didn't, didn't no, yeah. no. Nah, uh-uh. Which yeah. is like, talking talking about your shit ain't no issue. But literally, just call it for what it is. Like, hey, bro, man, look, I got something on my mind. I want to talk about it. Are you willing to listen? And we'll. If it comes to me, I'm like, yeah, sure. But, you know, I was like, I might have something to tell you, too. Are you willing to listen? Right. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Cause but it should be automatic, though. And that's that's another thing why I want to get into, like, what I'm – another, like, thing that I'm super thankful for is that, <clears throat> especially in this area, we've always had that kind of camaraderie. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, we've all been a part – well, you don't live in this area, so not you – but us three, <laughs> we've all been a part of like days where niggas literally been outside, yeah, seven eight hours, yeah, and everybody can voice like yeah. their frustrations or their grievances, and he says something, and then I say something, and he says something, mm-hmm. and it's like it's ten, eleven, twelve people outside, and everybody can just you know what I'm saying? Yeah, put in like, two cents. Yeah, just like uh, when we was at your birthday party. Yeah, yeah. Me, me you, Coop, Black Abe, and shit like we. Was, out there talking for like good six hours. Yeah, and and then it's just like it's, it was different groups of different people. Yeah, like talking. That. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like that's that's one thing. Like I said in the opening, you know, statements. It it's a bigger as the years go on. You realize it's just it's a bigger and bigger blessing. Yeah, because yeah. you can see who don't have that and how it affects them. Like, you see, like, the people out here that don't got, like, a lot of friends or no friends, any friends if that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you see, like. Yeah, simpler than that. Just realize that they don't have nobody that loves them or they love that they could go and talk to. Right. Yeah. And the right. The shit is that they be proud of it, too. <clears throat> well, low-key proud of it, but the thing is, like, they be miserable as fuck. Yeah, that's that, well, that's a society thing. Yeah. That's a, you know, you just. You want to make the best of what you. You want to portray the best of what you got. Yeah. Right. So that's that's understandable. That's yeah, I'm not gonna fault nobody for that. Yeah, but but so far, like from what we, even with me being over here this short period of time, you, like I was like pretty much, a, like, engulfed in the positive outlook of what the, like what you were explaining. Right. It's like you get the camaraderie. You get. Like the multiple perspectives, you get the people who are willing to talk to you about certain things, even though it's somewhat unorthodox when it comes to our natural Word. feelings as men. Right. Because mm-hmm. so, it's also some of our personalities too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. We all are different. <laughs> yeah. Start to realize you know, that we yeah. all are different. Sometimes, like our personalities somewhat conflict with each other, but we can easily just talk it out without having a, yeah. a serious backlash. Yeah. Or anything yeah. like and that. And as they supposed to. It's fine. As they supposed to. Yeah. It's like, fine. If we all just all thought the same, like that's more. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely fucking boring. Because there's, no, there's no evolution or growth right. from that point. Yeah. Right. And at the end of the day, I know like. If I if I call you about something, even if you got some different advice, I know you got my best interest. You're right at right. heart. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, mm-hmm. I ain't gonna never hit. Oh no, this nigga trying to set me up. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't yeah. gotta worry about that. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's mm-hmm. it's. I'm, I I almost probably might say it every time we link up. Like I'm just so appreciative of that. Like yeah. just all these years of just having y'all around. Like that shit. Yeah, the positivity. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big, big deal. And even though I haven't known you for years, 
it's been like a year now. Yeah, yeah just about a year. And then you it definitely you, felt like longer. It, it it has though. It has, but that's how you know like the connection be genuine. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm. It don't even matter if you know somebody for like two weeks. If you connect with somebody well enough, it feel like you know them forever. Yeah, and I say all the time about Marcus like he when I first met him, it's like he just fit right in. Uh-huh. Like he's been here, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. nah, real, real yeah. good. Like nah, just, I get that vibe, and I only met him an hour. Right, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like he's like one of us. He's just mm-hmm. been here all these years, even though he hasn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because you know how everybody done met somebody, and it's like it's kind of conflicting, trying to like be cordial and make it work. Yeah. Right. You know right. what I'm yeah. yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you ever I know you ever had like you know met your like your bro's bro or something. Be like, yeah. Well, yeah. Right, yeah. You kinda yeah. iffy yeah. and shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like, he your bro, so I'm I'm gonna be cool, but mm-hmm. he ain't really Yeah, he ain't my cup yeah. of tea. Yeah. 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 Versus like Mike had brought Mark over here and it's like, Oh yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah, fit right yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? It goes up with you can mess around like the friend more than you like him. Like, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I like your man's even more. <laughs> That's one thing I could definitely say when I met Abe, though, because it was just like, we, like, me and Abe, sometimes what I call like the Shaq and Kobe type of vibe, when we, especially when we make content. Mm-hmm. Like, so I got started with Mike, of course, like, doing a couple joints in the basement. And then I met Ave. And at first it was like, all right, I don't know how dude going to be acceptive to me. But, like, we did our first video together. And first, the first few videos that we did, like, one of them was a banger talking about Roger. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah, and Roger was me and Ave's one of the hottest videos out there talking about he took the kids, fruit snacks, and all that. And I was like, all right, cool. So I'm going to make a sequel off of that. It's another hot video. Mm-hmm. Ever since then, like me and Abe, we got this vibe where we could improv the fuck out of a video. Easy. Yeah. No script. Yeah. And then so yeah. it was just like, yeah, now nah. I was like, dog, like I could just look at Abe and nod. And Abe was like, yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. And then so now it's just like all straight aura. Yeah. So, you know, it, it definitely took lift off since day one. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely dope vibes. Yeah. Man. About to make me cry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why wow, when the vibes is dope? Yeah, nah, man. Nah, the vibes, vibes definitely be dope. Yeah, like, bro. That like, should be worth more than money, yeah. So no bullshit, cause I, I still remember like the first time I met both of y'all, like both of the A's, man. The first time I met y'all, it was, it was like it was like magic. No bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> just laughing and joking and shit. It's like being a part of the crew. Like I've been there forever and shit. Yeah. Just sitting in the corner over by the gym. Across from the gym. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Find each other up. (laughs) Good times. Good times. Niggas is definitely definitely welcoming this shit. Yeah. Look look how look how like how much time passed and look how things have changed, like considering back then, like by both of us being like a A. Yeah. Yeah. And now I barely even hear that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. like how much? Like how? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm barely, like I'm barely a Ave anymore. Yeah, it's a uh, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> like, like yeah. when I think about that, and it, it, my, it's crazy me even calling you Ave. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. Ave like yeah. it, but it used to be like. Yeah, like he said, we used to stand across from the gym. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's up, Abe? Like people making jokes and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, what's up, Abe? Right, yeah. Nah, not him, you. Yeah. Or oh, not you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Not you, exactly. not you, him. Yeah. yeah. And then just thinking like, damn, all these years later, I can, like, I get like a feeling if I hear the word. It, like, Abe, but Avery more so than Abe. Yeah, yeah. Like, if I hear yeah. Avery, I'd be like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, man. Even my mother called me or something wrong. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she don't even do it, like, full time no yeah. more. You know, it might be a teddy or a bit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I see somebody like. Like, like, not legally changed his name. It's a brand. <laughs> teddy yeah. is a brand, man. Damn, yeah, it bro. definitely is, though. Yeah. yeah. I don't know Teddy. It's been a minute, yeah. It's been a while for the Teddy. Yeah, Ted, Ted, like ten years strong right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so nigga always gonna be Abe to me and shit. 
Yeah, that's so, cool. It ain't nothing, you know. Yeah, I remember on the first joint, I kept saying, hey, when I got real, I need to stop. Like, nah, this is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I need to stop. But I know if it's Abe. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah when we link up, it's always going to be just Abe, Abe, yeah. Abe. It's like, damn, I need to remember. Like, hold on. My name Abe, too. I know the crowd is like, what is going on? <laughs> uh-huh. That's where the video podcast eventually going to come in. Yeah. And you're like, oh, all right, yeah, now we know who who each other is talking to. Facts. Mm-hmm. Because it was, it was always black Abe. Right. And, big and, and, then, and then you and then you evolved in the uh, foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you evolved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. I forgot the uh, movie. I got it. All. Oh, it was the High Learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. High Learning. That's where I got it from. Man, you still people still call you that? Nah, nah. nah. That, that didn't stick at all. That ain't stick. It, it did for some years though. Yeah, I mean, up at the court and stuff like that, but oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then I mean, you know, like twelfth grade year it did, but after that, probably like one year after that, a black age. Oh, yeah, black age. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, y'all. I tried. I tried. I tried. Yeah, I tried. You can't just be coming up with your own nickname. Like <laughs> somebody got to get to. Yeah. I said my uh, my author alias Tony Michaels. Oh, I mean, your author. That's different. That's, what that's, do you mean? That's, that's, that's still a, a nickname. That's a business though, and that's an alias too. Like, yeah, you talk right. Nickname is what they what the hood call you and stuff like that. Like I, I was given Teddy. It wasn't just me. So the niggas been calling me Big Mike ever since like forever and shit. Yeah, yeah. When I was Big A, that's yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah, Big Mike. That's acceptable. Like Tony Michaels. You know that's. That's Man. business. Black Abe, that just happened. Like, that's pretty marketable. <laughs> you look at me, you ain't got no choice. But <laughs> <laughs> hey. how, do we, how can we differentiate these two niggas? One of them's big, and the other one's black. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> hey. Hey. it wasn't Lil Abe. Nothing, it's just black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big Abe, Lil Abe. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's just started bad. You black, man. Black Abe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Ooh. people used to always try to make fun of the fact that this nigga was dog and shit, but then. And the nigga started joining on people. He was like, all right, all right, we're going to stop. We're going to stop. Man, one, <laughs> man, you just had to learn. For real, for real, with Jonah, you just had to learn that, like, if you went to Fallsville, you had to know it. Yeah. Know how to do it. Because exactly. if you didn't, you was in trouble. Especially sitting in that damn corner, bro. Yeah. Sitting in the corner. That sitting at the, uh, You sit at the wrong table. Oh, yeah, wrong oh, lunch yeah, table yeah. and shit. Yeah. Well, you sit at the table with, with okay, with elite. Elite roasters, yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. It's yeah, curse. Elite, yeah, yeah, elite Joners. Oh my goodness! Another another thing we was blessed with because our whole group was like elite. Mm-hmm. So we was blessed with that too. That's just that's just scary. Like, could you imagine like being in, <clears throat> being in a group where it's like only one or two elite niggas and everybody else just kind of be getting fired up? <laughs> like, you think uh, how you think they had groups like that though? That's what I'm saying. Could you imagine you being in one though? No. Yeah. <laughs> After y'all, I was a loner. But you had to, I ain't even gonna lie. It took me, I ain't get all right until like 11, 12. Yeah. 9th, 10th, I was getting killed. I, yep. think. I was getting killed. It wasn't until like 11, 12. That's when it was like, oh, nah, I'm funny for real. Yeah, exactly. I had to start figuring out, like, yeah, but it's, yeah, you got to grow into that. You just can't you just come out, come off the porch thinking you're going to be a great Jonah. Nah, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had good experience. I, I was getting killed in seventh or eighth grade. So when I got to ninth grade, I just like found my foot in a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, seventh and eighth grade, bro. I was, I mean, I, I had those those one or two little zingers and shit that made a little wave. But other than that, nah, I was usually just getting fired up. But once I got to like eleventh, twelfth grade and shit, it's kind of curtains after that and shit. Like niggas yeah. was going through like whole sparring sessions by that time. Yeah. Cause that's just looking like Rocky. Yeah, and most we used to do that shit on the phone. Yeah, man, we used to do it all. Yeah, yeah like we used to do it all. Yeah, like we used to do it all. Yeah, yeah you would get sparked here. up everywhere. You would get sparked up everywhere. Yeah, bro. Like, you could be fresh as hell. You still get sparked up. Yeah, yeah. yeah it didn't matter. Fresh. Oh, yeah, my man, fresh as hell. My nigga spent his whole motherfucking lunch money on that. <laughs> <laughs> no bull. No bull. Nigga gonna be just sitting at the table for the next three yeah. weeks. He gonna have shit to eat. I still remember them days. <laughs> Good old fools, man. So like, uh, oh, we was talking about Wichita yesterday, too. What? Bring it up and shit. Miss Brian. Oh, uh, man, fuck her, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I told, I told you. I said, you bring it up, bro. Bring her up around Mike. Mike gonna get mad and yeah, shit. Fuck her, bro. Hey, man, don't do that, yeah. That's like, one, that's like the only female I, I would re- literally just call a bitch. I can't stand her, dog. Like she, she at, man. Nigga, she failed me 11th grade. Come find out she ain't even the whole teacher, bro. 
She like, I had to go to feet. summer school and oh, everything. Yeah, she was one of the ones that was certified. Oh, for real? Yeah. Dang. Didn't she leave? I thought she left. She, she got fired. She, yeah, she got fired. Like, I ended up, like, I, I had like, to go we, to summer school after that. Like, after her class. Like, first and foremost, now that I think about it, this is this is a red flag right here. You just said you had her 11th grade. We was in the 12th, and we had her. Yeah. <laughs> so she's teaching two different grades at the Dang, same time. She crazy. <laughs> nah, but you ain't over here like like 35 teachers that got fired because like, they uh they weren't certified. Nah, uh-uh. she was Yeah, she was one of them. Like, the, yeah, the, once we graduated, that that summer that we graduated, yeah, yeah a bunch of them got fired. Yeah. Wow. Man, it's, it's Dang, she said like, she went to Temple and everything. Sure. Like, I mean, she probably got a degree. Yeah, that don't mean you certified. Oh, yeah, true that. True yeah, that. Yeah, true like, that true as far true, as true, like true, literature true. is concerned, I learned absolutely nothing from her. Like, I didn't learn nothing. Yeah, we read a lot. Yeah, I mean, you say. you read from the little uh, literature book that you got, yeah, and they Macbeth. just teach that for the entire year. I remember Macbeth. Yeah, it, that's yeah, like the only say, thing uh, you remember for the year, was, bro. Uh, what was the other one? Beowulf. Yeah, yeah Beowulf. Yeah, 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 yeah Macbeth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause remember we had the little pots, mm-hmm. Norse yeah. mythology. Everybody yeah. was a character. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we was doing that at uh, Mr. Myrick class, bro. Pop. Yeah, man, two pop. Yeah. <laughs> Machiavelli. So yeah, Sorry. who was the other one? Sorry, Mark, you didn't go to Forestville. Yeah, 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 you, where'd you go to Suitland? Yeah, you, uh, Fuck was, no, definitely. Yeah. Damn, nigga. I was not even in the area. What the I was, uh, I was at Flowers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, my big my was throwing niggas over the little rail and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man. So uh, he got a story for your ass. So this nigga was a whole kingpin. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, by the, accident, bro. Not by Dang. accident. <laughs> a whole kingpin. <laughs> Shoot, we got town tell the story. <laughs> yeah. no, no I such, like kingpin stories. No such thing as an accident, by the way. But, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You story, you it can. literally. Nigga yeah. ran a whole gang. All right, so uh, basically, I don't know if it was like some that like a reputation that had like lift take lift off. From middle school because I was just I was a quiet nigga all the time, mm-hmm. but um so I guess how how they say it only takes one time, yeah, and then right. the story will follow you since then. Yeah. I guess that's kind of like how it how it went. So high school quiet dude all the time made friends or whatever, and everything was cool. <laughs> so one of the things was is I was known I was known for a couple of things. So I was known with my friends and being around a bunch of friends all the time, even in middle school. It was literally a whole gang of us, and we never separated. Mm-hmm. We was known for having 10 niggas in one squad in middle school mm-hmm. every day, walking everywhere, literally coming from the same spot. You will see us come out of one house before school starts, 10 niggas, yeah. males and females. So that kind of uh, lifted off in high, sc- so high school. So I was always known for being around a group, and I was also – known for having a different girl each year so i started always taking this personality of like okay well i see myself as a as a higher person to myself so i started calling my girlfriend first lady every time oh okay, okay. so <laughs> real and every single time i'm around my friends i'm like yeah you know i got a new first lady such and such, such. So i'm like oh yeah and then so a lot of people start hearing them say like who's the new first lady blah 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 and they're like who is that and that means his girl mm-hmm. his girlfriend but I also ended up meeting other people, and it was like, it was a lot. Of, I wouldn't say that I was the alpha male, because it was a lot of alpha male personalities, but I was the wildest nigga in the group. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, when it came to my attitude and everything, it is what it is. Yeah. I was a hothead. It just is what it is. But I was always cool with the homies. I wasn't just going out there to bully people or nothing like that. But when it came down to Rumble or whatever, it's there. So, literally, my friends start calling me like, yeah, man, you know, you the captain, you the general, you this, you that, and such and such, and I'm the second-hand man, blah, blah, blah. So, literally, it was just them taking that on their own. I was yeah. just like, all right, yeah, do a conversation against, you know, amongst the homies or whatever. That's just the story he's telling you. And then, literally, it started to grow because now – it started to get to other people I didn't even know. I literally started having dudes walk up to me. It was like, yeah, man, you know, I heard you the, you the leader of this, this, this. And I'm sitting at lunch or breakfast or whatever. And they'd be like, yeah, you Mark? I'm like, yeah, who's asking? Because we, right. li- yeah. it was habits of niggas just walking up trying to start fights for whatever. And I'm just oh, like, wow. yeah. yeah, I'm like, all right, so, yeah, that's me. Who's asking? Oh, yeah, Marl, I heard about this, this, and this, and I'm trying to get initiated. What? What you mean? Well, yeah, your man's over there from third period said this, 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 and this, and this. And I'm like, oh, all right, cool. What's your name? 
All right, boom. So, oh, so once he gave you the password, everything. Was yeah. Yeah. No, he's just, I was just like, I was just literally, it was just like, what is your name? It don't sound like, a lot to, like an accident to, no more. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. And to me, it was just like, all right, whatever, cool. Well, nice to meet you, bro. Like, you know, you're amongst the friends now or whatever, and just kept it pushing. Mm-hmm. But then it just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. People start coming to me off the random, just like wanting to holler at me. Me, it was just like having friends and associates. Now, trouble start coming my way or amongst other friends. I have a pet mentality where I know you, I'm cool with you, I watch out for you because I care about you. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever it is you decide to do, and it's like, I will hope you would do the same for me, but if you don't, I mean, it is what it is. It's high school. So, like, I have other distractions to take my mind off of the shit. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But there came one time I had a friend. She was bo- being bothered by some dude and literally... <laughs> I was like, you know what? Cool. I got it. basically this is a free period because I was in a what they call a HSA class, getting us ready for the high school assessments. We've already got the answers for everything, so we just basically had a free period to a point where I could sit at all the lunches. Mm-hmm. So she's being bothered, and I'm like, all right, cool. I got this. So I'm like, I'm not gonna go ahead and fight here in class. I can get kicked out. I said, I know how to handle this though, and I know how to make them stay quiet. So I literally left, and I said, well, I know three niggas that are in gym right now. And I went to the gym, and I spoke to them. I found, I round all of them up because they was all in different spots, like courtyard type shit. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, cool, found them. And I was like, hey, yeah, man, you know, what's going on with you, bro? And he was like, yeah, what's going on, Mark? I said, yeah. So I got a bit of a situation. You feel like getting into some trouble? He was like, shit, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> literally, a whole gang of niggas followed me all the way back to the class, and we were just sitting there waiting outside. I said, okay. So, you can stop trying to make an ass of yourself at this point, or we can rumble now, to the point where I had a gang of niggas waiting for him in the bus lot. It was like, we know what bus you get on, we know where you're going, we know where you live at, so if you want to fight somebody, we can do this now. Mm-hmm. That's Ac- just Accidentally. That's yeah. just one part. Okay. <laughs> the accidental now, part. Here's, I'm waiting for, here's, I'm waiting for the accidental here's part. Here's another part. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, um, this will get overlooked because I'm not trying to incriminate myself, but it is what it is. So, I also had a friend who I was close to back then, and he had a bully. He was basically getting bullied at the bus lot and everything like that, too. And he was also amongst the group of friends that actually started. So, again, I'm hearing about it, cooling and everything, and I had big issues. I have really huge issues with bullying. Because, you know, I dealt with the shit. Now mm-hmm. it's just like, all right, now I'm growing the fuck up. I got the strength. Like, fight me. It is what it is. I, I love to fight. Mm-hmm. Give me a reason. But so I kept hearing more about the story, and I asked him a couple questions. I said, well, is it over? He was like, well, I think it is. We fought. I said, you lost? He was like, yeah. I was like, all right, well, that's cool. He ain't bothering you no more, is he? Yeah, I think he is. Because uh, he gave me that look. And other people started fucking with me afterwards. I said, all right, cool. I said, I think I know where his class is. So the way the school was built, on the second floor, it's like a mall. You know how like you got that big-ass gap with a railing on it and a mall? Mm-hmm. It's like that. <clears throat> Found him. So I stopped him by the rail, and I said, hey, man, you know, I understand you guys had a, a situation at the bus stop and everything like that. And I heard that you wanted to fight. It is what it is. That's fine. But you still fucking with him after the whole situation. And he had to stood up for himself. So I said, do you have an issue? He's like, nah, I don't have an issue. I looked at him. I looked at my friend. I said, is there really still an issue? And he kind of looked at the dude and looked at me. And I postured myself to the point where he's now, his back is against the rail. And I'm facing him. And I'm ready to toss his ass over. Mm -hmm. And then, so my friend was like, all right, I see what it is that you're about to do. Nah, we good. We straight. And so, one, he started to talk more about it. And two, there was people, because we have this big glass window where you can see into the cafeteria. Everybody from the cafeteria watching. Yeah, yeah. So now the story kind of grew a little bit. So every now and then, like, I, I was like, all right, cool. 
So if we got this little group, just the few niggas that, that was there, I was like, all right, this is what we call ourselves or whatever, you know. We cool with this shit. And they just continue to grow amongst other people, literally to a point where people just kept coming to me. It was like, I want in. I want in. You a cool dude or whatever. I just want people to be a part of the group. And I was like, it just fucking grew yeah. out of control at this point. It was just like, nah, I can't do shit about it. It just happened. At Same the man, top, uh, how many people would you say was in there at the top? I can't even begin to tell you. <laughs> at all. You probably wouldn't even know. Like, yeah. Yeah, so I, like, literally, I knew... There was people that knew me and I didn't know them. They was just mm. like, "Yeah, what's up, Mark?" And I was like, "Yeah, hey, man, was, am I tripping?" And then it was like, "Nah, they was talking directly to you." Mm-hmm. And I was just like, "I don't know him." Hey, that was not an accident, by the way. Yeah, I didn't hit the accident. But I, I, <laughs> yeah. I might have missed like, it. Like literally, it was just like other friends was just they. I get what I took but, as a joke. They was just like, "Yeah, man, you the captain, you you the leader, this and this and this." And I was like, "Oh yeah, 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 whatever." Oh, so he's being modest. And then your favorite, your it literally, word. it just took from one person to just go to another person. I'm just like, yeah, you know, my man's this, this, and this. We all got a, I guess he was like, yo, we all got a little group that we hang out with and everything like that. And so from one explanation that I got from one dude was just like, literally, yeah, we got this group of friends here. But it's just this one nigga who's not really too, who don't, who might not be too accepting. Mm-hmm. And I really didn't have an issue with nobody. It was just that I was to myself. I was closed off, mm-hmm. except for to those specific people. It was just like, yeah, well, you know, he's the one that you probably got to deal with the most. And on top of that, like, you know, he's just a bit of a wild card. And we follow behind him type shit. So I guess they was just like, well, yo, that's the leader. Hey, what's up? I want in. I said, and well, what? Because literally, that was the first question for like a couple of weeks. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, he said this. He said that. I was like, all right, cool. Well, yeah, you know, what's your name? And we shook hands and just went from, went from there. So literally now, I'm saying, hey, yeah, what's up, such and such and such. And he was like, yeah, you know, that's my leader, whatever. It was literally, and it was all different types of grades. Of course, it would have seemed like I was recruiting people because mm-hmm. I even had dudes, lower classmen underneath me trying to follow behind me, too. And I didn't pay attention to what was actually happening until it was already expanded and out of control. Mm-hmm. Man, the man that, had a whole frat. Ain't yeah. even know. <laughs> he know whole fucking he army. definitely yeah, did. He definitely know it, but okay. Yeah. Like, for somebody who was doing that on accident, you definitely played the part perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, hey, and I had I literally, all it took was for me not to pay attention at all. It was just literally all going over my head. Oh, I was so, just like, so, yeah, I'm so just the average dude chilling, so, trying to have a little high school sweetheart or whatever. And you had the two, your two henchmen like handling. Like, yeah, pretty the, much. Yeah. Like you got niggas sitting outside of my because, <laughs> like, literally sitting in bus slots for niggas. You think that's normal? Nah, I mean, that's I don't. I definitely don't think it was normal. I mean, I just had to me at that point, it felt like you know I had some loyal friends and shit like that, which literally. These were people that I knew. Like, I was introduced to other people. And they was like, man, that nigga funny. He cool or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I had associates. And it was just like, I had one. Now, I only rode on a bus with one dude named Shaq. We call him Shaq. That's how tall he was. Oh, so, so yeah, we had a Shaq, too. Yeah, so <laughs> I called him Shaq. And I only knew Shaq personally more than the other little, with you know, other group of dudes who I had rallied up at the time. And so... I guess it was like one of those things where it's like, man, if Shaq is down, man, I'm down. And I know him too. It was like, shit, why not? It's just like a double whammy. Mm-hmm. How I help you out, you cool, you loyal, whatever, and Shaq doing it, why the fuck not? Mm-hmm. So literally, people just like, man, look, I wasn't participating in gym anyway. I still got my uniform on. So yeah, look, let's get it. Man, El Marco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Facts. Yeah, that's going to be your new nickname. It's El Marco. It's a. <laughs> Good job, man. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Yeah, sorry, that still wasn't a fucking accident, though. Yeah, I, I still didn't hit the accident part. But, you know, I guess we everybody got different yeah, definitions yeah, of accident. It just wasn't an yeah. intention. That's all. Pretty sure the MS-13s and shit, like, I guess that's an accident, too. Yeah, accident. They just got some loyal friends. Yeah. <laughs> 
Nah, people like that, they had plots. Me, I was just You like, had a plot. You I had just, niggas sitting outside and bus just, like That was just that. Bars. Nigga just gave a, ten, just a, just gave a ten minute time. story. Like, that's yeah, a plot. Yeah, it was a couple of instances. <laughs> that was it. But like as far as like it growing to be a thing, nah. Mm-hmm. It was literally just like, man, I had friends that was going to watch out. Oh, no. Nah, that's had, that's just you, you started something. And on top of that, I think it was a plus two because they knew the girl that I mentioned, too. I was just like, yeah, man, such and such is fucking with her and blah, blah, blah. So, you know. You, you it was st- like, oh, for real? You man, started you know? something, you just didn't think it was going to take off the way it did. That's what that sounds like. Yeah, for it to grow like that, like right. literally to a point That's where people accident, hear about it and was just like, yeah, man, like, like, man I want to be a part. This is That's literally the accident, equivalent though. of giving a nigga an inch, he took a mile. That's that's literally what this is. Mm. Like, you, you got a little bit of power only, and then a nigga abuses authority. I only authority expected it. results from that one day. And it right. literally and it, and it, and it went off to the last two years. That's all right, man. That's all right, man. Hey, whole town, lady, like, give yourself a, another like six years in that type of environment. You would have been robbing banks. No oh, bull. Same little outfit you got on the day. Would have been Ocean's nah, Eleven. I was, I was, <laughs> like for real, for, I was a buster back in high school for real, bro. Like, a buster. Hang like literally hanging niggas <laughs> off a balcony. <laughs> yeah, a buster. But I'm bro. pretty sure nobody is gonna believe that. Yeah, hey, man. I mean, just because I was doing shit like that doesn't mean I was just like. I wasn't an average person, bro. Okay, nigga. Like, like I was not. I was not that. I'm pretty sure Mike Tyson was, was not, not average the hottest person too. dude out there, or whatever. Like the only thing that I probably say that people would have an argument. There were like a couple of instances where like I actually found out that girls had crushes on me that I didn't even believe I could get. And then also that's another martyr that my friends like to put out there too. Like, man, yeah, you definitely, man, you the, you the man with the plan, bro. Like you you got all the shorties and stuff like that. People used to ask me all the time, Mark, where the bitches at? I want to ask you the same question. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, like, you, like you been knowing me. You tell me. Yeah, no bull. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. But yeah, you know, sorry for calling the women bitches because I try, you know, not to do that. But yeah, yeah. that's just how they was. Yeah, it was like, okay. man, Mark, where the girls? <laughs> where okay. where the girls at, man? You gonna go smack, man? I'm like, bro, like you tell me. Like, it's opportunity for you too. Like, I ain't, I ain't the one who you got him. You got this. him. Oh man, that's crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got him. Even you know, it at only, this only age, t- you still got him, bro. It only took one little instance. That's it. And people just took that shit and ran with but it. But you, you still ran with it though. Like you ran with it. You nah, still out I'm here just doing out, you. you I'm just out. Supply. Why not I'm supply? just out here just trying to have me in mind. That's it. Oh, you can have a lot you, of yours. You got a girl now. Nah, I don't. I'm oh, all right, you can talk freely single. there. Yeah, yeah, talk freely I'm, there. I'm single as <laughs> ever, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, talk freely there. I'm single yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm just like, what like, hey, nigga, nigga, I got a girl, nigga. Like, nah, I can't he, just he be talking. Yeah, I got the bitch. Nah, he talking like he don't want to share. That's what he talking like, man. What you mean, share what? I ain't got nothing to share. Look, here you go. Hey, stick to that story, bruh. You just went to the strip club with, like, three of your your female friends who treated you. Yeah, like, but I also, like, treat them. Like and it's, it's not like when we all go out, it's just like, oh yeah, you know, when I do this for Mark, we all do stuff for each other. But you, you said you literally you're trying other. to friend zone somebody, like do like people that like I'm sorry, but to bring this up again, niggas that look like us, we ain't gonna sit here and just say, oh, we trying to friend zone her. It's nah. not how it works. And, and, well, not less. And the only reason why. Because the black ape got a girl already. Right. That's the it only reason bad. why. It sounds bad saying that out loud all, most of the time. Nigga, now, average niggas don't get that luxury. But literally, it's just that there's somebody I'm not trying to go to that specific level with. So it's just like right now, what I'm seeing and what I got and what I'm dealing with and whatever is just not going to work. So it's kind of like one of those situations. I know you do. I know you feel this way. But I don't, for one. And two, I don't know what it is, how you're going to have this under control, but mm, it's just mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I'm just not trying to go to that <laughs> level with you right now because it's just not, I'm not interested mm. with you. Now, unfortunately, Man, it's, 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 there's, there's no good way to put this part. I'm, I could be looking for elsewhere, but with you right now, what I see that you have going on, I'm not attracted to that. Mm. So it's just, and she could say the same thing to somebody else, which I know she has. Yeah, but we're looking at the way she look. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like anybody can anybody can have that conversation. I guess, man. Like if somebody come up and be like, yeah, you know, uh, Ted, man, I, I I really like you, such as this, I want to be with you. I appreciate it, but yeah. I'm not interested in you. Is somebody else I'm interested in? Anybody can have that conversation. <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna friend zone the chick though. Uh, I'm not gonna date her. I'm not gonna friend zone her either though. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's I mean, like, what it, it all depends on what the definition like of your friends on. So, because like me, what is your definition? It's literally it's strictly it's just like we just friends. We ain't smashing. We ain't doing this. We ain't doing that. It's literally just like we cool. We friends. We not going to that flirtatious level. None of that. What you do? I try. You I, do, try and, like, I try not that. to. You do understand that, that that friends have sex though, right? Do as you will, but I'm not trying to incorporate that. Okay. Because like you know that's just a recipe for disaster. Like because as many times if we if I start smashing, and it's just like things going to start, it's going to start to build up from her. And now I'm like, man, man, I got to do with this. I got to do with that. It's my fault because I have a hand in that too. I'm still <laughs> doing stuff. It doesn't matter how to me personally. It doesn't matter how many times somebody say, man, well, you know what? I'm good. After this evening, we smash one night stand or whatever. I'm good. I don't believe that shit. For one, I did it back then. And it grew into something more that I didn't enjoy. And then, two, I had that done to me, and it grew. So it's just like being on both sides of the spectrum, I'm more woke about this shit. I don't give a fuck what anybody say. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, I got it. I'm handling You know, it's not an issue, obviously. And to me, it's still a thing to them because they still bring it up. They've told me before, you know, it's, it's good. I, I, You know, I'm chilling. I got it under wraps. But still, there's certain comments where it's just like, obviously, you don't. So it's just like I'm not gonna give you yeah, anything yeah, yeah, yeah. for you to take as a misunderstanding. I guess so. Yeah. Well, I can see where you're coming from because you thinking you, ah, oh, we just friends, we're just smashing. And then she started to say stuff that's like, that's I want to be your girlfriend type stuff. That's, like, not, that's not his fault though. That's and I'm not. Oh, and, and, and on top of that, I'm not even gonna smash. <laughs> Now on top awesome. of that, I don't even see her that way no more. It's just like, nah, like. Mm. Yeah, because you've already been there and done that. I'm a typical nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a horrible influence. I ain't going to lie to you. Who? You. I didn't say nothing. He, I don't know the girl. He already did what he did. How am I influencing him? I'm like, what? <laughs> well, yeah, you did. I, you I did wish already, I could you do. You did already smash, though. Yeah. Know. You see that shit? I wish I could do my fucking. I ain't going to say nothing, man. Because you know, she might listen to this. Uh, 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 yeah, but, you know, just like. I try to stay respectful. Is this one of the period. ones that you said you want that you want to uh, be a part of, like podcasts and shit, bro? No. Okay. Good. No. <laughs> Good. No. Said, nah, no. nah, nah. She, she ain't coming over here with y'all. <laughs> 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 nah, 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 that way Eve around and shit. Nah, I'm, I'm cool, man. You know? <laughs> nah. It was just a few things that I, I experienced that was some issues, and I was just like, nah, bro, I'm not down with that. Like, if there ever was gonna be a chance, it's not gonna be now. Man. So that's cool. No, nothing wrong with that, man. After you done been, I'm just saying, after you done been there and done that, but then, he, you know. he, he's so disappointed. You can hear it in his voice. Well, I'm not disappointed. <laughs> nah, he's just know thinking that's one of them good problems right <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could have at least finished, nigga. Uh, Definitely bro. not a bad problem, man. Nah, bro, when you start taking responsibility for every fucking thing that you do, bro, you got to consider shit like that. Here you go. All right, man. <laughs> This nigga, bro. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> it's almost time for us to cut this short. So, the last segment we're going to end off with, we're we going to go around and kind of been chiming in on things that we thankful for. So, you don't have to go into, like, super detail, but just a couple of more things before we get out of here. Um, I'm already talking, so I'll go first. You know, first and foremost, we're going to thank God, mm-hmm. the universe. Thank drugs. <laughs> Nigga said drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely, Sorry. definitely got to shout out the family. My mom, sister, um, couple of cousins out there. Then my, uh, you know, the other side of my family. You know, y'all. You know, I got a few, bro- got a few brothers that ain't here right now. Respect. Yeah. Um, definitely appreciate any and everything. Every every day, every moment. Conversation, advice, you know. Every random chick that walks through that door with uh, lustful intentions. Yeah, I, I, I you know what? I, I'm even. I got. I ain't gonna. Not by name, but yeah. Definitely shout out a couple of chicks too. You know what I'm <laughs> they ain't made it to that level yet. See, finally, admit it. What? A couple of chicks, friends. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Since that, that seems to be like the terminology we on. <laughs> Yeah, a C- couple of friends I would like, to, female friends I would like to shout out. But, you know, <laughs> appreciate y'all. Not the demons though. No. It's a. It's okay, bro. So who wants to who wants to go next? 
Yeah, who, whoever decides. I mean, uh, I'll go next if you want. So. All right. Well, first and foremost, uh, yeah, I definitely want to be say that I'm thankful for family for sure. You know, for those who definitely were still there, hold me down and willing to deal with everything that I was going through, waves and all. <laughs> I love you too, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I can say that I'm Great. thankful for everything that I do have now, all the material and tools that I have and resources that I have, you know, to push forward and grow. Um, and I'm thankful for pressure because without pressure, I mean, I wouldn't even know that I even had the tenacity that I have now. So. You know, without the struggle, it, it, it definitely woke me up to let me know that I can go ahead and fight more. And say also say thankful. You're thankful for steroids. Thank. Say. I don't know. You stop telling people that. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. You're, you're, you're creatine cocktails. I mean, you know, <laughs> if, if you want to go recreational, <laughs> I'm thankful for protein shakes and weights and all that other shit. But definitely yeah. not for. Uh, for steroids, bro. Yeah, you're also. It's too much quote, to lose taking that. But you're so. quote unquote fat, though, I guess. I am. There you go. Abe. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm thankful for. Um, I'm thankful that I got time. That I had time to, like, mess up, to get it back together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful that I got time to set seeds in the grass and then actually watching them grow. Mm hmm. That's something I'm definitely thankful for because a lot of people don't have, you don't have the time or they done set a lot of seeds, a lot of plants, and they ain't watch them grow. Right. Or you just, you started off something and you know it's going to be great, but you didn't get the chance to see that. Right. It's a lot of people who's going through that too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who wasn't able to see it. Yeah. So we're just thankful. We already said God, but you definitely want to, Thank him as well, cause he he wrote it for you for you to be able to see yourself. So yeah, I want. I'm gonna just say time. Yeah, I'm gonna just leave it at that. That's deep, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's respect, man. Like, man, it's a full on gardener out here, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Shoot, y'all gardeners too. Look what y'all growing. Yeah. I mean, I, like, I ain't, ain't taking nothing away from it. Took one seed. All of it, one seed. Right. One, yeah, we Trying about to, to do build one. a whole bamboo forest out here. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. I don't think I, I'm not a big fan of bamboo. I am. I mean, I, I like the way it looks. It's just like, it's just there. That's I prefer sad. things that bear fruit. Okay. okay. Hey, hey, there is with the metaphors. No, I just like. Things that bear fruit, I prefer vegetables and fruits, like things I can consume. Well, I have family that eats bamboo, so. All right. You got pandas in your family? Yeah, well, bear, so. (laughs) Understandable. Yeah. Understandable. Like that. <laughs> hey, gonna lie. I almost lost it. You almost lost it for a second. I'm like, damn, I don't know what's going on. Like, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro do they gotta boil it first? Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's, it's really part bear and shit. Yeah, part bear, man. So, you know. So, what you thankful for, man? Uh, well, first and foremost, yeah, like, same thing as most of y'all. Like, thankful for family. Like, wouldn't be here without majority of y'all. Like, not just the people that. I have in my immediate family, like I can, I live with or anything like that. Just the people that I can count on in general, because family is a lot more than just a bloodline and a, a name tie. Facts. Mm-hmm. You like how I worded that? Yeah. It's just fire. I'm a writer for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, <laughs> let me stop. But um, I also am thankful for uh, positive mental health. Really, because honestly, I could have been dead by now. By my own hands, I could have been dead by now, but I'm thankful that I'm not. And I'm at a point where I don't think that will ever happen. I'm serious. I don't think that will ever happen because of where I am in life and where I am with my mind. Like, And since then, like since I, I've gotten past that, I've, uplifted myself I, I don't even need someone else i don't need out i don't need to outsource anything i can just uplift myself like the ability to elevate is amazing and i'm thankful for it still like, big shit yeah that was yeah that was dope facts 
and uh, more like also for growth in general, not even just elevation, for growth for everybody. Like being able, I'm thankful to be able to see other people do better. Right. Like I, I'm more of a, I, I'm somebody who enjoys just other people's success a lot more than my own, really. Mm-hmm. So, like I'm. I'm a people person. Like I prefer other people to to succeed and do better. So the ability for me to actually get a chance to see people grow. Like I I saw Mark come from a guy who literally at one point was on his deathbed. Facts. Mm-hmm. And to see this man where he is now, amazing. Facts. Mm-hmm. Even the little time that I know you, it's been a complete. Yeah, I was going to say, you definitely see some growth, too. Yeah. yeah. There was mad conversations where it's just like, <clears throat> bro, like, I don't know. Yeah. And anytime I went missing, it was a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we literally sitting here talking, my man, what the fuck happened to my man, bro? Yeah. yeah, randomly just checking up on you. I'm like, yo, you good? Like, you know, nigga ain't hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And if, if life permits, then... Definitely gonna be thankful for what great things we about to accomplish with the new year coming up. Yeah. Right. Um, Me too. Yeah. So definitely yeah. look definitely look forward to that. Yeah. Well, twenty twenty two should have some huge, huge strides. Damn. Say it. So that's thankful for having the insight to look forward. Yeah. Yeah, bro. And we, we hope to get Black Ava over here a little bit more often and uh, Yeah. Have like oh, the sure. fresh voice, man. Oh, does it? Yeah. We got some we got we got Talked about a lot of things. Yeah. You know. Definitely. Just hit me. I'll yeah. Sure. I'll pop up. It's yeah. definitely the opportunity to meet you too, bro. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, you were here last yeah, time. It was just uh, Ben. Ben. Yeah. 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 Ben. Yeah. 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 Definitely yeah. great meeting you. Definitely. Like I said, all this first, this, what? what we, two hours now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It's definitely been very insightful. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Got me looking at stuff a little bit differently. So, yeah. yeah. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. Likewise, bro. See, man, like. This is what breaking the narrative is all about, man. Like, you get a chance to be ourselves instead of, like, adhering to what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Like, we get a chance to, to just define what we are and not let it, like, let ourselves be consumed by the same things over and over and over again. You're getting so many different perspectives and so many different outlooks on these different topics. And it's just, it's perfection regardless of what topic we talk about. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Uh, so with that being said, you know, it's been another BTM podcast. And uh again, thank thank you, Mark. Abe. I'm Teddy. I'm Tony. And uh we out.